we are a performing group, as I said, that, uh, but we usually we just play music, we compose music, we record music. But a year and a half ago, uh, um, I got a call suddenly from uh, northern Norway, from a town of uh, Tromsø. You can see it on the map. It's on the top of Nor Norway almost. Uh, I've never been there, and I was kind of surprised uh, what what was call about. Uh, but the call was uh, from uh, uh, TIFF Festival, Tromsø International Film Festival, and we were looking for a uh, folk musician to play music uh, for a silent movie. Um, it was a very new experience for for me. Very new thing, uh, and of course the first question I I asked them what's what's the movie uh, we, you want me to play for? We live in a region of Russia which is called uh, uh, Karelia. It's the northwestern part of Russia, and we have uh, a lot of lakes, forests, uh, rivers. Uh, we have two biggest lake lakes of Europe situated in our place, uh, lakes Ladoga and Onega, where. Yeah, and the uh, answer was, because you are from Russia, uh, we, we would like to give you a, a movie which is mm, Russian movie. It's actually not Russian, it's Soviet movie. It's, it was made in 1924. And uh, uh, the name of the movie is uh, Extraordinary Adventures of Mr. West in the Land of Bolsheviks. Very, <laughs> very uh, long name. So, a few words about the movie. Uh, of course, you can find a, a lot of information about this movie in the internet, uh, in better English than mine. Uh, but uh, it's uh, about the name again. It's Extraordinary Adventures of Mr. West in the Land of Bolsheviks. Uh, Mr. West is, uh, you know, it's from 1924, uh, when actually uh, United States and Soviet Union, they didn't have a diplomatic uh, relationship then, I think. And uh, this movie has a lot of satire about, sorry, about a stupid American who is coming to, to uh, Soviet uh, Russia and Moscow. So Mr. West, by this movie, is a uh, guy with a big glasses. He is a leader of YMCA, and he is going to uh, Bolshevik Russia to contact the locals and organize some business there, maybe some things there. Uh, in a railway station, when he gets to Moscow, his uh, briefcase, his suitcase is stolen, and and one teenager stole stole it and brought to uh, adult criminals. And they, they get to know that he is American, and they they want to get money from him because they think that he's very. Uh, rich man and uh, it happens that we, he is in the hands of those bad guys and uh, they are showing me showing him a wrong picture of uh, Moscow at time because they want to do it and uh, many things happens in this movie and uh, in the end of a movie of course because it's like Soviet propaganda movie he meets uh, like real good great Bolsheviks and they, they show him uh, like real Moscow, like nice buildings and uh, and the movie ends very funny. Uh, Mr. West sends a telegram to to his wife uh, in New York City and uh, told her to uh, to put the picture of Lenin on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's a Soviet comedy. You know it's uh, of course it's a uh, kind of propaganda where also mostly in the end of the movie, but uh, uh, mostly it's a, just a comedy, funny comedy, and many funny things are happening where a lot of uh, chase. chase. chases, like chase. running, running from one place to another place, uh, with different persons. And uh, one of the characters there is uh, Mr. F uh, West's uh, friend, uh, who's a cowboy. He has a, wears a cowboy hat, and when we started to work with the music for this movie, of course we got ideas to use some uh, like uh, Western 
um, country style uh, melodies because we had a banjo player then and we, I also played a little mandolin there and uh, it was one part of the movie uh, when we showed those uh, cowboys and Mr. West we played some country tunes and uh, then uh, we showed those bad Russians we, we played some Russian melodies some, some scary things were and because we had uh, people with a uh, rock background in our team we used some uh, rock riffs also. Oh, okay, I'll show you this short video. Because you know, um, only part of our group, Satuma, which is here, was a part of this project, so we, we cannot do exactly what we did uh, when we played for the movie, but uh, we'll show you a little bit. Try to play for you one uh, melody, Scorellian folk melody we used in a movie with Norwegians, but now we play with Satan. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
wants to know who music going. <laughs> When for the Russian movie, mm. even the little bit that we have seen, do you think they were copying early American movies? Uh, yes, I think so because uh, for sure, you know, we we, we watched the uh, early American movies in in Russia even before revolution. I'm sure, but uh, also after revolution because. Uh, 1920s, it was, it was more open time in, in uh, Soviet Union. Later, in the 30s, uh, borders were closed and uh, well, the whole country was more isolated then, but in 20s, it was more open and uh, I'm sure we watched all those American movies also, but because it was also a propaganda movie, we, we had to show Americans like very special way, you know. So <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> How was this old film received now in Russia? Oh, very well, very well. All audiences where we played, we were very excited. And uh, uh, for us, it was, of course, very important to, to know how, how did our music uh, work for that. But they said that music was a very nice ad for the whole movie. And uh, when we did this music, we, we uh, we were thinking all the time, all the time about uh, music, but m music didn't uh, have to, uh, didn't have to be the main thing, you know, because the movie is the main thing, but uh, music is just a second thing. It just add to the movie. So that's why we were not playing very probably difficult stuff, or because uh, we wanted our audience to concentrate where. Watching a movie, not for listening for music. So it was. Hey, what happened? Should we make a challenge? Yeah. Oh, you yeah, had a question. Yeah, yeah. I, I <coughs> was interested in uh, hearing you say what you thought of the cooperation in the Barents region. If I remember, it was uh, established right after the fall of the Soviet Union, and goes all the way to the Amal Peninsula. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at all of northwest Russia. Northern Finland, Northern Sweden, Northern Norway, and it's a it's an area of economic cooperation mm -hmm. and development. But this is cultural development. Yeah, probably you know much much more about it. But I was only part of this one project only. But, but, but how uh, successful did you think it was? Do you think that as a result of this film festival and the international cooperation, was did it? What were the results of that? Uh, I think that uh, in our hometown and other towns of Russia when we played, it was very... Uh, people were excited that uh, uh, this uh, old uh, Soviet mov movie comes back to Russia via Norway, you know, because it was kind of interesting. Because, uh, you know, it, um, me, for, uh, me uh, personally, uh, I wasn't... Uh, Actually, I didn't. I never seen this movie before. I was in, invited to this project because I, I've seen mostly <coughs> some old movies with Charlie Chaplin and uh, probably only a couple of Russian old silent movies. But I was uh, we could find it in the internet, and if you watch it, where you you'll see that it's uh, it's very well done. It's very dynamic. It's not like a you know this very early. Um, uh, silent movies when we have this one mm -hmm. picture and uh, everything is happening like in the theater, you know. It's, 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 we use a lot of, uh, uh, how to say it, cutting uh, film. So everything is very d dynamic. Actually, this movie is made by Lev Kuleshov, who was a famous um, uh, theater, uh, not theater, a movie uh, director in Russia at that time. And it had uh, probably one of the well-known uh, uh, actors of that time. Yes, Ayla adds also a very interesting thing that uh, because we brought some probably new music to this project, some rock rhythms and uh, folk music and uh, some country music, uh, our audiences were very young, so uh, it was very impressed that uh, there were a lot of people, for example, much younger than me, coming and uh, 
watching this movie. And uh, I know that uh, this project between Tromsø and my hometown Petrozavodsk, it's it didn't end. It still continues, and we every almost every year we we in, invite uh, musicians from our hometown to to collaborate with uh, uh, Norwegians and young musicians as well. Yeah, and uh, we'll continue with saying a few words about some of our instruments we have. Uh, I start with this one. This is called the Kantare. Uh, it's a Finnish zither. Uh, uh, the age of the instrument is uh, unknown. It's at least 2,000 years old instrument. And you know that zithers were played all over the world, but this is Finnish, Finnish zither and uh, Finnish Kantale. Uh, has re re relatives in, uh, in Estonia, which is called the Kannel. It, we have relatives in Latvia and Lithuania. They call them uh, Kankles and Kokles. And also in Russia, we have, we have a similar instrument which is called Gusli. So they are all close related to each other. So Kantale can be five, six, or eight, or ten, whatever strings. Uh, originally, traditionally, but now uh, people mostly start with uh, five string cantale. Many kids can do it. This is a ten string cantale. Actually, it's twelve string cantale, ten plus two bass strings. Actually, it has eleven only, Dave, because I cut one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, playing cantale, uh, playing of cantale um, was traditional. Uh, uh, hobby of uh, people in Finland and uh, Karelia. Uh, so people played different melodies. Sometimes they played for dancing. Sometimes they played, uh, imitated, for example, church bells. And uh, by the Kalevala epic, uh, uh, Kantale was also used for singing, was traditional oral songs, but probably not everywhere, but in some places. And another instrument that we have here, uh, it's uh, called Jouhikko, or Jouhikannel. It's a traditional instrument played by bow, like a violin. Uh, this one came to Karelia in Finland from the west and uh, has some relatives even in uh, Wales. Yeah. A very complicated name. I probably even don't know how to pronounce it. Something like <laughs> That's what I know, but it doesn't have any uh, vowels. vowels. Yes. Uh, Yohik is played by bow. Uh, traditional Yohikos had two or three strings. Uh, originally we were made of uh, Yohi. It's also part of the name of the instrument, Yohikko. Yohi means uh, horse hair. So uh, traditional strings are made of horse hair and it was modern Yohikko has four strings and uh, some synthetic strings as a second row. Uh, six strings, but it's like a modern modern <laughs> instrument by made by one of our friends in our hometown just a few years ago. And I will, oh, my friends will play a few different uh, uh, traditional flutes and uh, this is a traditional folk clarinet, clarinet called the Mankari uh, from Finland. It has a reed in it. After we'll finish, you can, if you have more questions, we can tell more about instruments and you can even play them if you want. Now we'll play for you traditional melody. I have shepherd's flute. Oh, this is a shepherd's flute, sorry. Uh, sorry, buddy. Yes. <laughs> we'll play traditional melody which is called Maritus. It was recorded uh, 100 years ago in Vladimir region of Karelia by Finnish folklorist Armas Oktoveisenin by phonograph recording. And. Uh, uh, Originally, this melody was played by Yohiko. But now 
I will add a cantare and a flute.
Next one is about are the also composite. Next one is about mother that is the best person. <laughs> she she makes the, the best bread. Uh, Her house is uh, the best house. <laughs> And uh, when you grow up, you always want to come to her house. And we took uh, words of this song from uh, also Kalevala. Mm -hmm. Not Kalevala. Uh, so the lyrics are uh, picked from a uh, uh, book of uh, lyrical poetry, traditional poetry. Uh, collected by the same guy who created Kalevala, Elias Lundrut. So the name of the book is Kanteletar. It has a nice uh, sample of traditional poetry, which is not uh, epical, epic, but uh, like lyric, lyrical. Music is uh, my own, so you can probably hear some influence from where and where. <laughs>
vaikka on musta kurki harsi, aunisaa.